Good afternoon and welcome everyone. I'm Chancellor Alexander Cartwright and I'm so thrilled to celebrate a remarkable legacy of support for the University of Missouri today. I'm so privileged to welcome our Mizzou alumni back to campus. I love to hear how a single Mizzou-made legacy can ripple across generations, changing lives and starting a tradition that's bigger than any individual. Today we have a great example of what that impact looks like. Ken Donahue graduated from our College of Engineering with his industrial engineering degree in 1967. But his bond with Mizzou began long before that. Jack Donahue, Ken's father, earned a chemical engineering degree from MU in 1933, and he was awarded the Missouri Honor Award for Distinguished Service in Engineering in 1961. And in 1950, Ken's uncle, Paul Zolman, was a member of the College of Veterinary Medicine's first graduating class. Ken's mother, two of his aunts, his second cousin, and his grandfather are also Mizzou alumni. This family clearly bleeds black and gold. I'd love to see how much collective black and gold they have. And that's a big part of why today, Ken and his wife, Ellen Kippel, will honor this Mizzou-made legacy with two extraordinary investments that will bring more opportunities to our MU community and help us serve the world even more. First, in honor of Ken's uncle, Paul Zolman, Ken and Ellen have committed $310,000 to support the College of Veterinary Medicine's Shelter Medicine Program. I know you'll hear more about this uh, a little later, but our MU Veterinary uh, Health Center is already a leader in animal disease diagnos diagnosis, research, and treatment. And the Shelter Medicine Program brings these state-of-the-art resources to the animals and caretakers that need them most, while also providing hands-on learning opportunities for our veterinary students. Through Ken and Ellen's support, this program will enable us to increase access to our surgical facility and mobile surgical shelter medicine unit. We can help relieve the care burden on our statewide shelters and the devoted people who run them and improve animal health. We are so grateful for Ken and Ellen's generosity, but it doesn't stop there. There's even more. In honor of Ken's father, Ken and Ellen have also committed $1.4 million to establish the Major General Jack N. Donahue Fund for Diversity and Inclusion in Engineering. This is amazing. Our College of Engineering students faculty and staff work hard every day to solve the world's grand challenges. But to fulfill such an ambitious mission, one that reaches all across Missouri and around the world, we rely on the collective brilliance of our people who come from all different backgrounds and experiences. Together, we can innovate better ways society works and lives, and we can discover the boundless solutions that solve these boundless challenges. Ken and Ellen's gift will support the Office of Diversity and Outreach Initiatives and its Inclusivity Center. This enables the college to continue building a world-class educational and scholarly environment that is accessible to everyone from everywhere. We are so honored that Ken and Ellen can help us further our collective work as a diverse and global community. And we can't thank them enough 
for their immense generosity. Today's $1.7 million in support of Mizzou raises their total giving to more than $3 million. That's remarkable. And I will tell you that personally, I've been blessed to know both Ken and Ellen and get to know them. And I, I, don't, I can't even describe how incredible both of them are. Humble and really want to help this institution in every way that they can. And we are so, so lucky to have both of you be part of the Mizzou family. Thank you so much for everything you do. And now I'll also say what I was supposed to officially say. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, it's, you know. uh, on behalf of our entire community, thank you for your incredible vision and love for Mizzou. Your generosity enables us to be a university that serves our state our people, society, and the world. And now I'm pleased to welcome first Dean Elizabeth Laboa of the College of Engineering to talk more about the impacts of this remarkable gift on her college. Thank you. Dean Laboa. Thank you, Chancellor Cartwright. Uh, for that wonderful introduction, and thank you again to Ken and Ellen for your generous support also of the, of the College of Vet Med. I have to say, um, as a dog lover, this uh, providing care to uh, shelter animals in need is, is near and dear to my heart as well. Ken and Ellen and I had a chance to meet earlier today and, and also last night. If uh, all of you might recall, Stephen Covey was here giving an incredible presentation. And I showed them this morning in my office while we were talking and I was thanking them, uh, my copy of The Speed of Trust, which uh, over the last couple of nights, my wonderful dogs, my shelter dogs, had truly embodied, <laughs> literally. And uh, I still had most of the book, but we laughed together. So yes, um, and <laughs> that's right. I saw the important parts of the book. But you know, of course, your, your gift will provide great learning opportunities for our veterinary students, uh, and which I know Dean Henry will spend time talking about. But of course, your generous gift to uh, vet medicine would have been reason enough for us to celebrate and uh, gather here to express our gratitude. But I can't thank you and express uh, how much we want to honor you for your commitment to the College of Engineering. As the Chancellor said, it's a commitment that goes back decades to 1933 when Ken's father, Jack Donahue, received his degree in chemical engineering from Mizzou. And Ken followed in his father's engineering footsteps, earning his degree in industrial engineering from our college. What wasn't mentioned is something that I've learned uh, more and more about the wonderful uh, partnership and relationship Ken met Ellen in 1975 while working as a group underwriter, uh, underwriter for an insurance company in California. And in 2007, while officially Ken and El Ellen retired to Oceanside, California, uh, I don't think either of them are really retired. They're very active in their community, uh, they're interested in political activities, and they are involved with animal rights issues. Uh, but what really, I would say, beyond that means so much to us, and I'm looking at uh, Assistant Dean for Inclusive Excellence and Strategic Initiatives in my college, Tujan Rahal and Hilary Mueller, the Director of our Diversity and Outreach uh, Initiatives in the college. They also care deeply about supporting minority students, students from different backgrounds, and women, uh, which are still a, a very underrepresented minority in engineering. And this is something I have been passionate about since becoming the first woman dean of the MU College of Engineering in 2015. Ken and Ellen's gift to the college, a $1.4 million donation to establish the major general Jack N. Donahue Fund for diversity and inclusion in engineering will build upon the diversity and inclusion initiatives we have established at the college. Our Office of Diversity and Outreach Initiatives facilitates the outreach, recruitment, 
retention, and overall success of all members of our community, especially from those, uh, those from backgrounds traditionally underrepresented in engineering. We provide professional development programming surrounding inclusion, equity, and diversity for all of our students, staff, and faculty, and we house the Inclusivity Center, which provides a physical space where everyone is welcome. Our Women in Engineering program seeks to provide resources for prospective women students who want to change the world through engineering. And the college and this program also focus on recruiting, supporting, and retaining women students by creating a more inclusive environment. Our college has more than 50 student organizations, and many of them support underrepresented groups, such as the American Indian Science and Engineering Society, the National Society of Black Engineers, the Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers, the Society of Women Engineers, and Alpha Omega Epsilon, a sorority for women in the STEM fields. Our Office of Diversity and Outreach Initiatives actively supports and helps these organizations succeed. And I've always believed that the more diverse the viewpoints and input, the more likely we are to come up with the kind of creative, cutting edge ideas to solve seemingly impossible problems and make the world a better place. I truly believe innovation lies at the intersections. To solve the kinds of global challenges that lay before us, we must be equipped with the skills to work collaboratively with people from all backgrounds and walks of life and to embrace diverse perspectives. Over the past few years, we have made great strides toward becoming a more welcoming, more inclusive campus and college, but of course there's always more work to do. The Major General Jack N. Donahue Fund for Diversity and Inclusion in Engineering provides the resources that will allow us to redouble our efforts to make the College of Engineering and the University of Missouri a place where everyone feels safe, secure, welcome, and able to achieve their incredible dreams. It is now my pleasure to introduce the first female dean of the College of Veterinary Medicine, Carolyn Henry. Thank you, Elizabeth, for your comments. And thank you, everyone, for being with us here today for this wonderful event. I'd also like to thank Ellen and Ken for improving the lives of Missouri's shelter animal population and supporting the education of our future veterinarians. We're, of course, grateful for all of the support that we received for the college, but I have to say this one has a special place in my heart. Uh, we were just at lunch, and I think we were about 22 minutes in before we started sharing pictures of our pets, <laughs> as often happens when you have animal lovers get together. Um, and I've got two pit bulls, and Elizabeth and my dogs have play dates, giving you more information than you want. But on, it, it, we have two rescued pit bulls, um, Betty Davis and Patches O'Hulahan. <laughs> and... Uh, as, as rescues, I, I appreciate the support that, that your efforts um, bring to programs like our shelter medicine program and to others. As Chancellor Cartwright noted, Ellen and Ken established the Paul E. Zalman Fund for Shelter Medicine in honor of Ken's uncle. Dr. Paul Zalman advocated for training veterinary students to be proficient in all areas of veterinary medicine, which is fundamental to the tenant of our curriculum at the College of Veterinary Medicine. During their shelter medicine rotation, our students develop and improve the clinical skills that they need on day one after graduation. Our shelter medicine program began in 2011 to provide preventative veterinary medicine services to animal shelters throughout Missouri. All of our DVM candidates are required to spend at least three weeks in the shelter medicine rotation. And under the supervision of our licensed clinicians, our future veterinarians gain hands-on experience in spaying and neutering shelter dogs, administering vaccinations, deworming animals, and conducting health exams. Sometimes they're even called upon to remove masses or to treat orthopedic injuries, which requires a little bit of engineering, so we've got that too. 
Through the program, shelter animals also receive dental care, some of which is extensive and requires multiple, multiple extractions. And all of these services help to prevent disease outbreaks, greatly improve the animal's chances of being adopted, and help communities and animal shelters keep down expenses. In addition to building clinical expertise, the Shelter Medicine Program encourages our students to appreciate the importance of giving back to their communities and to their veterinary profession. By cultivating a servant leadership mindset, we believe that our students will carry forth that principle when they go out into practice. Since the program started and up until this August, it was housed at the college's Middlebush Farm, which is about 10 miles south of town. Uh, not an actually ideal situation if you're bringing animals from the Humane Society, which is our primary shelter partner here in Columbia, the Central Missouri Humane Society. Uh, the new space that we have is extremely functional, and its central location and access close to the shelter um, will allow us to greatly enhance our capacity and flow of our program. With seven active and five intermittent partnerships with animal shelters, we're on track to spay or neuter 1,500 cats and 550 dogs in 2019 alone. We also recently held our first rabbit spay-neuter day for adoptable rabbits at the Central Missouri Humane Society. There's, there's a joke in there that I'm just going to pass on. <laughs> Our ability to improve and save thousands upon thousands of lives since the program started eight years ago is directly attributable to the shelter medicine faculty and staff, our students, and of course generous friends like Ellen and Ken. The shelter medicine program continues to strengthen current relationships and build new partnerships locally and around our state to improve the health of dogs and cats and sometimes rabbits in shelters. We have a vision for the future of our program as we evolve to meet the needs of our shelter partners and to train our veterinary students to serve their communities. And that vision is inspired by the compassion and commitment of people like Ellen and Ken. It now gives me immense pleasure to welcome Ken to the podium to share some thoughts. I'm not one that likes to speak. That's why I want my own with me. <laughs> and since really my father is saying, we took a second to die a life insurance policy on Ellen. <laughs> they want, I tried to get both of us, but we couldn't because they wouldn't insure me because I had prostate cancer. So we had to insure it through Ellen. And so that's why we're going to use this. At the end, I'm going to get Matt and James to come up because I want to thank them. I started here in Columbia. I went to first grade here in Columbia, Missouri. My father was stationed in Japan during the Korean War time frame. So the year before I went to the Philippines, I started at uh, Grant School. I can remember playing around this school over the years and all that. As a kid, I can remember rolling on the uh, columns and all that. So I always felt part of this university was in my soul. I picked Paul because he, was, he loved animals. He was my aunt. Uh, we used to kidnap him. My brother and I used to kidnap him and make him take it out and get ice cream here. Back in the uh, late 40s, early 50s, I can remember that. So he was always my idol and all that. He loved animals. He never had a job. He had an avocation. And I saw the love of animals in his eyes. We used to go up to Mayo Clinic and he used to walk us around and show his experiments. And I used to love that. My father, because of education, I always felt, I never had a father-son relationship because my father being in the military, he had another job. So uh, I was never really had that, but I always knew he loved education. And he always, when he came here, he always brought me around the campus and all that. And I loved, the engineering building, I have to say, the new structure I don't quite like. <laughs> it's the new brick over the old brick. 
I never like white, the white chemist, but I, it just, the color, I, that was not a color I liked. But on campus here around the columns has always been mine. I went to summer school here one year. I was visiting my grandparents. My grandfather was in soil conservation. So one summer, he, in fact, he took me on a trip around Missouri when he went around the farms and he, he took me out and I saw the small towns and, and I can remember when the hotels were in the towns you stayed, you didn't have motels and all that. And I enjoyed it. Went to Hannibal, spent a, a day there. He took me through that. So I always was associated to Missouri. I went to a time frame after we, with Tom, I had when the Republicans controlled this and they started taking funds away from the university. And I felt like, why are you trying to take away from something we're trying to train our future leaders and all that? The part with the VA, I mean, with the vet school was because of his, through the Mayo Clinic and all that is why I picked the vet school. And I wanted to thank very much James. James, I wish you'd come up here. <laughs> <laughs> because when we started talking about this, I mean, he helped me to do this, and I want to thank you very much. You bet. You bet. <laughs> We've been involved. No, I want you to stay here. <laughs> We've been associated for so long. He's, I almost feel like he's equivalent to my brother now. I want Matt to come up. <laughs> when I first met Matt, we started talking about what we were going to do with my father. And he brought this idea of the diversity in education. And because of him, his reason, and to me, honestly, he does look a little bit like my father, to be honest. <laughs> I can see in his face and all that. And so because of him is why I picked that. We already had donated through James earlier money, and, but I didn't get the idea to get my father and my uncle and they were always my guiding light right in life. And so that's the reason why these two gentlemen, I thank you very much. Thank so you. I appreciate thank you. Thank you, for you. Thank you, Matt. I like to end this. This is, if you remember Elijah Cummings, who just died from Baltimore. He had a statement he said he, he read in when he, he got first elected to Congress. I only have a minute, 60 seconds in it, forced upon me. I did not choose it, but I know I must use it. Give account. If, if I abuse it, suffer if I lose it. Only a small little minute, but eternity in it. And so I join you as we move. So I wish everybody here, especially the students, prosperity in life and happiness. And because I have to say, education will give it to you, but you have to have your friends with you. And as of last night, trust. Trust is very much so, I could, could I, through my life, I had, I could see it and I wish we could train it. And it's something that, it was wish you could bottle it and you could eat it and you enjoy, and you know what to do. And, but that is the most important thing. Friendship, trust, integrity in life. I wish upon everybody and thank you. can't do anything but wrap up after that, but I will, I just want to tell you, Ken and Ellen, you made my day on a number of fronts. Our staff and our team in advancement work really hard to build relationships and develop, um, try to find that nexus between donors' interests and philanthropic intent and university uh, goals. And for you to honor two of our staff members tonight means a lot. That doesn't happen that often. And, uh, I want to thank James and Matt also, but also just for our team. Thank you for doing that. And I, I also want to say that 
Um, Ken is one of the, those individuals who not only is incredibly supportive of Mizzou, but he also lets you know when he doesn't agree. So uh, after 2015, I was getting a lot of emails from different people, and Ken would regularly um, uh, send me updates or questions about why isn't uh, the state and others supporting Mizzou, and I really appreciated that perspective. And, and you really brought a, a kind of a different spin on some of the other things that I was hearing at the time, so I appreciated that. Um, you also, I just want to close by saying you're also role models. So I know uh, Elizabeth agrees with this, but you know I've worked in this field for over 35 years. Inclusion and diversity gifts are very rare, and I think and I believe your gift will inspire others. Um, to consider something like this. We, we are very interested in inclusive excellence. It's one of the pillars of the university and systems goals. And so I really think that you will be a role model for others as well. So we really appreciate that. I wanna wrap up by just saying that uh, this year we saw a record-breaking $200 million year in support. Uh, we had $29 million gifts and um, it's because of these relationships that are built, and I always say everybody's for more money, but when you look at the impact of these two gifts, it's why I'm particularly proud of what, what we do and so thankful for what the Im impact of what that will ha be like for Mizzou. And as I say in closing, um, endowments, when we're all gone 100 years from now and many of uh, these buildings will be gone. Those endowments are going to still be there honoring your legacy, your family's legacy. And I thought it was particularly telling that you decided to let um, honor someone else's name in your family, not your own. That also is an incredible uh, tribute to who you are and the integrity that you bring, both of you. So again, let me close today with uh, one more round of applause for Ken and Ellen. And Ken's already told me he's going to have, he's got a couple of cookies on, uh, that has his name on it. So we're going to go back there and enjoy. Please enjoy the reception. And uh, thank you for being here. M-I-Z. Thank you. Thank you.